But first up, breaking news. Sit just got real. Chaos in Congress as House Democrats stage an all-night sit-in to push for a vote on gun control. This was dramatic, like nothing we have ever seen before. We're in uncharted territory now. We certainly have not had members uh, sleeping overnight in protest. This historic protest that lasted for more than 24 hours. Yes, it turns out the best way to get something done in Congress is by sitting on your ass. <laughs> but jokes aside, what happened yesterday was unprecedented. House Democrats, so frustrated with their inability to even get a vote on two gun reform bills, uh, including one supported by 90% of the population, staged a sit-in of a magnitude unseen in modern history. Yeah, but that didn't mean that they couldn't have a little fun while they were doing it. It went on throughout the night, the House floor sometimes looking like a rowdy slumber party. Lawmakers bringing in pizza, late night snacks, cell phone chargers, even blankets and pillows, and giving each other neck massages. I just brought Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Representative Cleaver of Missouri, he had a large pink and white striped pillow, and he said that he was prepared to spend the night. You know that congressman's been saving that pillow, right? <laughs> You know, he's been having that pillow. You can't just pop out and buy a pink and white striped pillow. That's not how it works. The guy's been waiting forever for this moment. Every time he's been in Congress, like, and now? No? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> how about now? Oh, no, no, no. Obamacare? No? Oh, man, looks like it's... Uh, sit in! Finally! Yeah! Now I get to use my pillow and my matching blazer. <laughs> Why does it match? <laughs> man, 25 hours. Can you imagine? 25 hours just sitting there together. And I'm sure the first couple of hours were cordial, you know, but after, like, hour five, people probably started to let loose, you know, let a fart slip here and there. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's 25 hours. Someone's like, what is that smell? Republican bullshit! <laughs> now... Now, the congressman leading yesterday's sit-in was none other than Georgia representative and famed civil rights protester John Lewis. John Lewis, uh, the uh, congressman, the civil rights icon who helped lead this sit-in. Best known uh, for the work he did during the civil rights era, uh, leading the march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. In the 1960s, he led sit-ins demanding an end to segregation. That's right. That's right. This is what John Lewis does. He's been sitting in for decades now. He knows that when you want something, you sit in for it. Gun control vote, you sit in. Civil rights, you sit in. Opening night tickets for Star Wars Episode 7, you sit in. <laughs> hmm. Marched with King, I have. <laughs> Overcome we shall. <laughs> now, for me, uh, the biggest winner of, uh, of all last night was C SPAN. Because you see, a big part of the story is that the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, ordered C SPAN's cameras turned off, which meant the world couldn't see the Democrats' protest. But it seems Paul Ryan forgot what year it is. There are no cameras inside and there are no microphones because the House is not officially in session, so C-SPAN cannot be on. Members of Congress are capturing live video on Periscope and other social media outlets, and now C-SPAN, the cable channel, is actually broadcasting those Periscope streams. This is so insane. C-SPAN was broadcasting Periscope. I haven't seen old and young work that well together since the first Karate Kid. I don't even know <laughs> what... The... Broadcast on, broadcast off. <laughs> I mean, cable TV promoting technology that will someday replace it. That's like candles being like, hey, have you guys heard about light bulbs? Wow, <laughs> wow. And by the way, uh, Periscope wasn't the representative's first choice, uh, but Snapchat, unfortunately, didn't have the same gravitas for them. It just didn't Debate work. It and vote, and people can be free to vote whatever way they choose to. But our Constitution says... They should have used the protest filter. So, the Democrats won out and were able to broadcast the sit-in, uh, you know, to the American people. And as we all know, with great power comes a handful of representatives who don't know what the hell Periscope is. I discovered Periscope today. You don't know what Periscope is. Thank you to our... Younger members that understand this is a <laughs> new yeah, technology. Hey. Call your representative up. Oh. Call these Republicans oh. up on the phone oh. and tell them we want to vote. America, you can win this battle tonight for us. Show, show them the telephone number. See. <laughs> guy is 
so cute! <laughs> and, and impressive. How many people can say they've used Periscope, the app, and an actual Periscope? How many people can say that? <laughs> but he's right, though. He is right. I will say this. You see, the reason the NRA has so much influence in Congress is not just because of their money, but it's because their most vocal members call Congress all the time. And right now, you're probably like, that's a good idea. I'll tweet them. No, no, that's not gonna work. Emails don't work. Look, see that phone that you probably have in your hand right now? Maybe you didn't even know this, but there's actually a phone app on it. <laughs> and if you move the phone from here to here, you can call your congressperson with your voice. <laughs> and maybe you're like, ah, oh, Trevor, that's something only old people would do. <laughs> yeah, your congressperson is old. <laughs> that's why it's the only thing that works. So basically, last night, Congress had a slumber party. And uh, as with any slumber party, it's only a matter of time before lame dad breaks it up. The chair would hope that the business of the House could be conducted in a fashion that, represent, that respects positively on the dignity and the decorum of this institution to which we all belong. Poor dad. <laughs> That's a man who was like, yeah, sure, honey, uh, you can have a slumber party. What is it, 20, 25 girls? How crazy can it get? <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> now, many people saw this as an act of protest, you know, civil disobedience, a plea to do something about guns in America. Paul Ryan, well, um, he saw it another way. This isn't trying to come up with a solution to a problem. This is trying to get attention. This is nothing more than a publicity stunt. Uh, yeah. That's exactly what a political protest is. That's what they are, they're publicity stunts. When the colonists threw all the tea in the Boston Harbor, no one said, that's just a publicity stunt. <laughs> you can't have a tea party without cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> but if anything, if anything, the one place you can criticize the Democrats is using the sit-in as an opportunity to fundraise for their campaigns, which, to be honest, is pretty <laughs> You know, when you're up on the moral high ground, it's not cool to be looking for money. That's not the time. You know, that's like Martin Luther King going, I have a dream, I have a dream. And someone else is like, yes, Dr. King has a dream. And for $500, you can turn that dream into a reality. <laughs> so after over 24 hours, the Democrats finally stood down. Paul Ryan and the Republicans uh, never did allow a vote on the gun reform measures. And the reason why, as one Republican congressman put it last night, is that they didn't want to surrender to legislative blackmail. <laughs> but essentially, their argument is this, and that is, this isn't how the House works, right? In the House, the majority party decides what bills come up for a vote, and if they gave in just because Democrats were causing a scene, it would set a dangerous precedent. Yeah, you'd have random Congress people doing sit-ins, you know, all the time for every little vote that they wanted, which is ridiculous. The seats of their pants would start to wear out from all the sitting. And you'd end up with a bunch of old white dudes in assless pants. <laughs> Nobody wants that. I get it. I get it. Although I do wonder, if Republicans say a loud minority shouldn't be allowed to control Congress, then why do they let the NRA do it? Hey. And let's not forget, <laughs> let's not forget, in 2008, when Republicans were in the minority, they pulled a similar stunt, because they wanted a vote on expanded oil drilling, and then Democrats blocked it, so they also staged a protest. And that's fine, people, because protesting is a valid way to make an important point. For Democrats, the point was that Americans don't want over 32,000 people to die every year of gun violence. And for Republicans, is that we want to drill more holes in the ground. <laughs> Both equally valid issues. <laughs> now, look, Republicans do have a point, though. Responding to this pressure by allowing a vote could break the system. But let's face it, the system is already broken. The people elect congressmen to represent their will. And right now, by refusing to hold votes on a bill that's supported by 90% of the American people, the GOP is ignoring that will. And so the Democrats are just trying to shock the system back into working, you know? It's sort of like, like what you do if you, you put a dollar into a vending machine, and you're trying to get a Kit Kat, and then your Kit Kat gets stuck in the coil thing. You are well within your rights to smack the <laughs> out of that machine. <laughs> yeah. You get in there, and you smack the <laughs> out of that machine. And if Paul Ryan comes along and says, oh, excuse me, uh, that's rather uncalled for, uh, you'd be like, yeah, who gives a That's my mother Kit Kat in there, and I'm gonna get it out. <laughs> and if I may, one more thing about Paul Ryan himself. The problem with Paul Ryan... Hey, guys. So it looks like, uh, Paul Ryan managed to shut our cameras off 
<laughs> so I'm coming to you live from Periscope, and I encourage every one of you to join me and let your voices be heard. <laughs> thank you so much, because that's what democracy is all about, people. That's what it's all about, and thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, thank you so much. Democracy is supposed to represent the will of the people, right, and well... <laughs> That's true, that's true. Pandas are indeed soft. Thanks for chiming in. <laughs> anyway, it's designed to represent the will of the people. I, I don't... I don't know... <laughs> I don't know where your garlic bread is, and please don't call me betch. That's <laughs> not cool. And when a democratic government fails to listen to what the pe... <laughs> that's garlic bread and banana bread are both delicious. You don't have to choose one. <laughs> it's not a choice. And when a government fails to step up, the responsibility falls on the rest of us. And what the people... <laughs> First of all, I am not your daddy. <laughs> and even if I was, I wouldn't fist you because that would be weird. <laughs> now, what was I saying? All oh, right, right, right. The will of the people. All right, wh what? <laughs> Who doesn't have the... What does that even mean? <laughs> Look, I'm trying to... <laughs> well, thank you, but I am not John Legend. Um, <laughs> look, look... Look, asshole, I don't know where your garlic bread is. I don't know. Why do you people... I'm trying to tell you, you know what? Paul Ryan was right. Cut the feed. Just cut the feed. I'm sick of this. Cut it. We'll be right back. Cut the feed. Hey there. It's The Daily Show's Trevor Noah. We have our own YouTube channel now, so uh, please do subscribe. Uh, I'll, I'll wait so you can... I won't even look, just because I know that's weird. It's sort of like when a dog's doing its thing. You can just... Yeah, just subscribe. I won't, I won't look.